Ian Wallace spent the first year of his life in Shoreham, England. He escaped when he was two, moved to Canada, painted his first self-portrait when he was nine and did not look back. He simply continued to plant us firmly on the international art map. He is a photographer, an artist, and sometime musician who is considered the godfather of photoconceptualism. He is also one of the art luminaries featured in a documentary called Picture Start alongside Jeff Wall and Rodney Graham. Wall, Graham and Wallace are the biggest art stars to ever come out of Canada. They have known one another for 40 years. All come from Vancouver, Canada. All continue to live and work there. Their work has set in motion a distinct art culture in Vancouver, moving the city from a position of relative isolation to one at the leading edge of contemporary art. It is my pleasure to welcome Ian Wallace to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, three art stars, Heady Company, and there were more. There were many more, yeah. Mm -hmm. So take me back uh, to you, nine years old, uh, the self-portrait. Did you sign your name to it? I did, as a matter of fact. You did? Yeah. That's, that's a, a part of the, I think, the, the pleasure and a bit of the ego of being an artist. You get to put mm -hmm. your name there in front of the image. Yeah. Were there artists in your family? Did you grow up surrounded by art? Well, uh, two of my mother's aunts were uh, commercial artists in England, and mm. she grew up in England, in, in London. She was born in Vancouver, but grew up in London. And her, I remember seeing uh, she had little books of uh, beautiful watercolors by right. her aunts, so I remember mm -hmm. being inspired by those. But I think uh, it was mostly just comic books that uh, inspired my really? interest in drawing and art and representation and storytelling. And Specific such. comic books? Um, well, I grew up in a very small town in the interior, and this was in, be in the 40s. Uh, uh, my father had uh, children's books, uh, like illustrated children's books mm -hmm. that I used to be inspired by, and comic books and that, yeah. And, Archie and Veronica? <laughs> was there, did they this come is almost after? Be, I came after before I think, Archie yeah. and yeah. Veronica. Well, I was interested in cowboy books, you know, mm -hmm. Hopalong, Cassidy, and those oh, those of type course. of characters. You know. Roy Rogers, Dale exactly, Evans, exactly, yeah, all of that. That, that, that was the generation. You know. mm -hmm. right. And uh, when you came to what's called photo conceptualism, mm -hmm. was there a word for it? Um, no, but the, you know, there was a, a movement in the late 60s called conceptual art, which still mm -hmm. is very influential on, the, mm -hmm. on contemporary art uh, today. Um, uh, but in the uh, 70s, um, uh, I mean, I was one of the innovators, only one of them. There were other artists internationally that were also exploring photography. Uh, I saw the possibility of photography and, and um, uh, enlarged photo photographs uh, to be able to compete with paintings in the mm -hmm. museums, not uh, in terms of the usual format of smaller mm -hmm. format photography, but the very large scale photography. And um, for me, uh, I, I saw the possibility to link some of the um, uh, technical and conceptual and, and intellectual aspects of uh, conceptual art that was doing a lot of kind of uh, exploration of social political issues, mm -hmm. uh, tied them in with large-scale photography uh, for uh, exhibition in museums, uh, uh, it, in a sense competing with painting uh, in the museum. Right. Yeah. And did it get any respect in the beginning? I think, I mean, especially amongst the artists, um, uh, not all the artists of course, I mean there's uh, uh, Art is a very, you know, many different <laughs> competing kind of ideas mm -hmm. about what is good, valid, interesting, etc. And uh, that's what makes it interesting and exciting. It's kind of like a, a microcosm of a lot of the competing ideas that exist in social life in the world sure. in general. Um, and, um, but uh, yeah, I think it, it got, people were interested in it, and at least if they didn't like it, they had to take notice of it, mm -hmm. uh, especially the painters. Uh, who saw a direct challenge something to somewhat to their and museum directors uh, museums tend to divide collections into photography collections painting collections uh, sculpture collections and then when photography began to compete with painting on the wall mm -hmm. space of the museums they had to reorganize their thinking about the hierarchy of art forms right. etc so those that came into it mm -hmm. yeah. but what is it about vancouver do you think 
that ha has uh, spawned so many fine contemporary artists, a uh, hotbed of great photographic artists and photo conceptualism. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it about this spot? Well, I've thought about that many times, and I get asked that question a lot I elsewhere. Um, uh, but uh, I think there are, you know, one could look at very specific reasons. Uh, one, I think, is that Vancouver is was the terminal city of Canada, for instance, in North America in a way, mm -hmm. on the West Coast. So a lot of um, you know, creative people that were disaffected with the uh, given conventional institutions of art and society, et cetera, moved to Vancouver quite early and mixed with the pioneering and frontier society that existed here. I'd say Emily Carr is a classic mm. one, and some of the major figures of the Group of Seven, uh, Frederick Varley, for instance, uh, and James MacDonald moved here. and built up uh, the beginnings of what you might call a bohemian artistic sure. culture in Vancouver. So it's long, it exists for a long right. time. Well, I'm sorry, I'm an art historian, so I see things in the long term. I'm sure yeah, you do, yeah. but you think Painter's 11, uh, and yeah. I think bohemian, and some mm -hmm. of them, yeah. boy, did they have fun. Apparently they ha had the odd cocktail party with a, a nude woman as the table. Uh -huh. Well, that's, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, whatever let makes life interesting. Yeah. Yeah, let creativity <laughs> flow. Yeah. But uh, the three of you, and there were there are many more than There's three. There's more than the, three of us. In, the three in of you featured in this uh, mm -hmm. documentary picture start, and there are others. I shouldn't yeah. say there's just three of you, yeah. but you're you're uh, the stars, uh, if you will. Well, I don't yeah. know if you're the stars. Sorry, but I put myself. In, you know, I, I'm there. My colleagues have incredible reputations, more recognized than myself even. Uh, I'm I, you called me the godfather of, of it. Yes. I'm, I, you know, I gave many of the initial pushes mm -hmm. and there is a big supporter and participator, very active, but I have to pass the baton on to people that have gone way past me. Uh, you know, like so. a Jeff Wall. Jeff Wall, Rodney Graham, Stan Douglas, Ken Lum, others, mm -hmm. many others, you know. Uh, but Wall and Graham were your students at one point, They were, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ken Lum and Stan Douglas and Roy Arden, they were all. <laughs> and did, yeah. you, did you see the possibilities in them as, as a professor, as an instructor? Absolutely. You yeah, just they, knew. They, were, they, were, they were brilliant people to begin with. And I mean, as an instructor, I was just very lucky to have in, in my teaching experience and in my, as an artist too, because I have, wore mm -hmm. two hats, so as an art historian and an artist, um, just the the luck to be able to spend time with these people and and learn from them and participate with them in the total enterprise mm. of make, creating a really active and viable contemporary art culture mm. in Vancouver. So when Wall, Graham and Wallace get together, uh, or got together, I'm yeah. sure you still see each other, oh, yeah. but I know you're yeah. all busy, but when you used to get together, uh, who formed the Garage Band? Was that you? Uh, well, I was definitely part, part of it from of the it. beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, Rodney Graham was a major instigator, right. and then we started jamming and, and uh, with others uh, like Jeff, Frank, Jeff Frank Johnson or Frank Ramirez mm -hmm. uh, and others. And then we had a, the studio. We started in the Simon Fraser Studios in East Hastings Street <laughs> and uh, just rented equipment and just started mm -hmm. playing and inviting other people, including people like uh, David Wisdom yes. and... Uh, William right. Gibson, the, the writer. The sci-fi yeah. writer. Yeah, and they all, we would just kind of have a good time playing music. You know? How great. And uh, could any of you really play music? Uh, some of were us could. Were there some musicians well, we were, in we there? We practiced a lot. We weren't real musicians, I have to say. None of us mm. were real musicians. Some of us were more competent than others, and they covered for the rest of us <laughs> that weren't so uh, competent. But people got interested. And of course, it was the punk period in the yes. late 70s. Mm -hmm. um, and you were able to get away with a lot right. um, by making a lot of noise for the most part. And um, the energy was there, mm -hmm. and we were asked to perform. So we performed quite a few gigs around, and did a, a record. Uh, you did? Oh, yeah, the, under UJ3 RK5, mm -hmm. the Uptown Jerks, the U Jerks, we were called. So, <laughs> so that was a, a fun thing. Mm -hmm. And um, Rodney Graham has a band now, right? He has the Rodney Graham Band, which is an excellent band, and mm -hmm. they, they've done many prestigious gigs, including they even played the Louvre, I always say. Really? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so they not only hang somewhere near the Louvre or in uh, the Tate. Yeah, they're a, <laughs> so real they're, <laughs> a real art band. A real art band. But it's so marvelous because you think to be able to explore creativity 
at all those levels, at, at a, a photographic level, an artistic level, an observing level, and then at a, at a musical level. What part of, of creativity haven't any of you explored? Um, you may not want to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder in the picture start if I wasn't acting or not, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we also are, you know, we, we write and uh, mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to being able to articulate our ideas and publish, et cetera. So there's that part of it. Um, I am very interested in poetry. I don't write poetry myself, but very, very read a lot of poetry and pay a lot of attention to understand mm -hmm. the poetic sensibility, you might say, that informs my work in a positive way. Because in this work, it seems to me, and I've never done it, there's um, uh, a lot of thinking and mm -hmm. observing. Mm -hmm. And I watched in a Picture Start, uh, I believe it was Wall, trying to get the uh, young person to jump out of the tree and he could capture it on film, and the patience it took to get the right shot, yeah. which he would go on to put something together, but what was he thinking? Why person out of a tree landing on the supposedly the ground, mid-air person, and then what do you do with it? Like, uh, the process of how your brain works is fascinating, really. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you get an idea? A, a protest, a political thing? Um, well, all of us in this, we're often lumped together as a single group as though there's some homogenous. Right. Uh, other than the fact that we're friends and use uh, many of the similar techniques mm -hmm. and come out of a common milieu, we're all quite different. We have our own independent careers, uh, often quite different ideas about things and different, different sure. ways of coming about this. Um, uh, Jeff Wall, for instance, is, is brilliant. He's extremely fastidious with technique. Um, and as you saw in the film, uh, just yes. the shot after shot to get it exactly right, mm -hmm. to capture from what for him was a childhood memory. And so there's like this technical fastidious uh, ability or mm -hmm. uh, attention to detail, uh, combined with, I think, a very strong and imaginative sense of intuition. And that's what makes interesting art. That's what makes convincing art, I think. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, of course, is highly recognized as a, I mean, he is a, brilliant artist and a brilliant writer and, and mm -hmm. thinker in many ways. And in the film, he says, I think some very, very cogent and very, uh, some of the best things that happen in the film are some of his offhand comments even, you know. When he said with yeah. somebody, I think he, it was he who said when they asked him about photo conceptualism, like why Vancouver? And he said, well, we've got Vidges and Tojos <laughs> and, and we have photo conceptualism. <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's as I was, your earlier question is, it's, a, it's more than that. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I think, the total social milieu of Vancouver, which is a very vibrant, exciting city. And, and I mean, I'm of an older generation, as I see. I'm almost being considered a senior artist now, even though I'm very good friends with more senior artists than myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a younger generations of artists coming up that all add to mm -hmm. the mix. And uh, if, they did, if they weren't there, I don't think we would be able to do what we were doing. I Just understand as the that. Previous generations mm -hmm. were also important, from Emily mm -hmm. Carr through to the people like Gordon Smith and Jack Shadbolt, who created modern culture on the West yes, Coast. Yes, very much, and, and Gathy Falk. And Gathy Falk, exactly. We could mm -hmm. keep l naming names. We could, but we won't, because we'll take a break. <laughs> <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk more about Picture Start. It's screening at the Doxa Film Festival. Ian Wallace is part of it. <laughs> 